What up? Mitchell Griffith here with Griffith Goods and Spirits. Today, we've got another great Steven Spielberg movie that captured all of our imaginations and asked the question, what happens if dinosaurs really do come back? As we always do, let's start with a cocktail. Today, we've got a margarita so good that Jimmy Buffett run toward a dinosaur for it. Start off with a handful of ice into your shaker. Two ounces of tequila. One and a half ounces of fresh squeezed lime juice. This is key, don't go for the store-bought stuff. This will really make your flavor and your margarita pop. And then you're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of agave. Now, we're gonna lock that tan in and give it a fun shake. You'll know your margarita's done whenever your tin gets frosty like that. Your perfectly salted margarita glass. You're gonna unlock your tin here. Open pour everything in there for you. And then cap it off with a lime wheel. You did it. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. Let's start our hold on to your butt pulled pork sandwich. We've got the smoker going at 275, but while that's firing up, let's go ahead and start on our dry rub. We've got our olive oil. I'm just gonna give this a little coat, and this is basically just so the seasoning is able to stick to your pork butt. Just go ahead and massage that all in. Now that we washed our hands, let's start on this dry rub. So I've got two thirds of a cup of salt. I've got a third of a cup of garlic powder one tablespoon of paprika, a quarter cup of brown sugar, and we're gonna do fresh cracked black pepper, two thirds of a cup. So, this is gonna take a while. I got my workout in for the day and got all this black pepper done. I'm gonna add two thirds of a cup of black pepper and find a lid. Now that we found a lid, I'm gonna give this a good shake just to make sure that everything's incorporated. You wanna coat this liberally. And so, some of y'all may say, that was a lot of black sugar. <laughs> liberally apply this rub to your brisket. Uh, what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it a good bark uh, whenever you are done smoking. And what a bark is, is just like the crust that's formed on the outside of the meat. It's a Texas style, so it has a lot more black pepper in it. It's gonna give it a good crust. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and go set it fat cap up so that it continues to baste it while it's cooking the entire time. And then once that fat cap splits, we're gonna wrap it in foil and let it keep cooking until it hits temp. We're gonna go ahead and start on our coleslaw. We've got green and purple cabbage here. I like to do this just for a little bit of a color variety. So go ahead and cut your cabbage head in half. And then do the same to the other one. All right. And then what you're gonna do, so we've cut a V into this. We'll just go ahead and pop that part out real quick. And then you're just gonna cut this cabbage as thin as you possibly can. So we've got all of our purple cabbage cut. We're gonna go ahead and toss this in our strainer over here. And we're gonna do the same thing with the green cabbage. Okay, so we've got all of our cabbage cut and we're gonna toss it in this colander over here in the sink. And what this is for is we're gonna go ahead and salt this just so it draws out a little bit of the moisture from all the cabbage. Cause you don't want your coleslaw to just be really gross and moist and watery. You want it to have a good thick consistency. We're back, so we let our cabbage sit, salted and drain in the sink for about an hour or so. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and make it into some coleslaw. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. We're gonna do about three tablespoons of mayo. And then we're gonna add 
about a tablespoon of honey to this as well. Also, we're gonna do a teaspoon of dill, add our carrots, and for me, I like a little bit of bite, so to offset some of like the mayo and vinegary taste, so I add a little bit of purple onion in there as well. You can do it or not do it, it's up to you. And we've got our pork butt going downstairs, we've got our coleslaw in the fridge, and now it's time to start the baked beans. We're gonna go ahead and hit three garlic cloves and just dice those up really fine. And then... We've got two tablespoons of butter that we're gonna to top into our pan. Go ahead and get that going. And we've got a yellow onion here. We're gonna take the head off of it. And we're gonna go ahead and do half of this yellow onion. All of this garlic and onions is going. We've got our oven heated to 350. And once these get just before they're translucent, basically this yellowish color, we wanna go ahead and stop those so that while we're, they're cooking in the baked beans, they don't just turn into like a little goopy mess. You might be saying, Mitchell, this recipe calls for bacon. Well, we're living in the snow apocalypse right now, so we don't have any bacon because all the stores are closed. Our lives are in your hands and you have butterfingers? But what we do have is a little bit of bourbon to add in here to take all that little burnt pieces off the bottom. And so now what we're gonna do is add all of this to our glass pan. We've got two cans of Bush's baked beans that we're gonna put in here. And we're gonna top those with all of our onions and garlic mixture. We're gonna give that a good mix around. Just let everybody get to know each other. I've got some garlic basil butter here that I'm just gonna go ahead and coat all these in. And then we're gonna to toss them in the oven at 350 just until they're nice and toasted. That way they don't just become big old sponges. We've got our pulled pork done. We've got our baked beans done. We've got our coleslaw out of the fridge. So time to assemble. We've got, we're gonna to toss down two pickles. We're gonna get a little bit of this pulled pork, toss that on there. We've got Wright's barbecue sauce, the best you can have. We're gonna give a little bit right there. Cap that with some of our homemade coleslaw. Oh yeah. And then top bun, do a little bit of baked beans on the side. And now you're ready for family dinner. I'm surprised you don't have 40 stray cats outside. One and a half ounces of fresh squite. Squite? I've never been able to do one of those before.